WTJR presents Friends of Wild Olive Branch Ministries with Kyle Kopp and David Vance, serving the Yeshua. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now, today's message. Well, we welcome you in the name of Jesus, and we appreciate you. We thank you for tuning in today. I'm David Vance. Kyle Kopp's not here uh, presently, but we're taping some shows with Scott Souter. And welcome, Scott, again to the uh, fourth session. And uh, we've had a good good time in the Word, and uh, we just ask you to go ahead and open up in some prayer, Scott, and uh, then we'll continue for a moment. Heavenly Father, again, we, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to serve you by sharing your word. Lord, it's a, it's a privilege to be called upon to, to share your word and to teach your word, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, we, we, we pray for our men and women who are in the service today and who are protecting our country and, and putting their lives on the line. And we ask you, Lord, that you would protect them and take care of them, Lord. We ask that uh, those that those that are out there would hear the word, hear your word, Lord, and and they would uh, turn their lives to you and keep you number one in their lives, Lord. We, we pray for protection over, over Israel, Lord, and we pray for the leaders there and the people in, in Israel and uh, know that the United States is right there behind them and, and, and that they are our brother in, in this world, Lord. We, uh, we thank you, Lord, that your word today is the exact word, Lord, that you want the people to hear today. We, we thank you, Lord, that you have so much to share. We thank you, Lord, for so much love that you have for us. And, Lord, you loved us first, and, and, and we need to love you, and we will love you, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask that you would take control over this entire segment and that you would bless each and every one watching and listening today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you were praying that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Young lady, you're watching your... You're trying your best to get up and, and turn us off. Don't turn us off. It's not, it's not us. But you're about to receive something from the Word of God that's going to change your life today. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so you just sit and relax. You'll be okay. Well, I, I speak peace to you now in Jesus' name. And, and just hear the Word. Lord, Just plant, I plant that seed in her heart firmly in Jesus' name. Devil, I bind you, Mm -hmm. command you not to steal that word like you try to do every time in Jesus' name. That she would be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and go on to produce much, much fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have some scriptures for you. Scott, at the last end of the last show, was talking about a scripture that he reads every day. And there's a couple that I read, but if you have those handy, do you want to read that one again? It was Psalms 50, 15. Okay. I'm sure I can find it. Well, while you're looking there, I want to tell you mine. Mine's in Exodus 31, verse 3. It says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and ability and understanding in intelligence, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship. And as, along with that, Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know or do not distinguish or recognize or have knowledge of and understand. So by saying those, by reading those and meditating on those, every time I call upon the Lord, I'm, he's going to show me things that are hidden from me yes. for whatever the reason. And that I have the wisdom, the ability the understanding and the intelligence and the knowledge to do anything that he asks me to do. 
two very wonderful and precious scriptures for me. And God says in, in, in Psalm 50, 15, call upon me in the day of trouble. So basically God is asking us to call upon him. Yes. He doesn't, he doesn't expect us to, to, to do it on our own. And, and the young lady that you were talking to, there's more than one out there, Dave. Okay. There's, there's so many people out there that need to hear something today. And, and I wasn't one of those that, that, that got saved early in my life. I was later, I was 30 years old before I got saved and I had all that garbage behind me and I, I hated it, but it just didn't, it, it just didn't make sense. I, I, I couldn't, couldn't understand what God wanted me to do and what God would do with, I'm just a, a normal guy, you know, what, 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 what would God want, want to do with me? But, but he called. And, and I, I finally got saved, and I got into a good church, and, and I was sitting, sitting in this church, and I turned to my wife, and I said, God wants me to go to school of ministry. And she said, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, me. So there's, if you're sitting out there, and you, you don't think that God has something for you, you're mistaken. Because God does. He's calling you right now, because you're not watching the show by coincidence. That's right. There is not, a, there is not a, a word for coincidence in the Bible. You are there for a specific reason. And God is calling you today, right now, for something. Now, when you pray, don't just pray and walk away. Pray on what God wants you to do and then take the time to listen to what He's telling you or what He's yes. asking you to do. Yes. Very important. Very important. As a matter of fact, you know, even, even listen, I want to tell you, you were born in this time for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We were all in Him. He knew us before the beginning of time. That's, That's right. what the Scripture says. But we were not released all at the same time. Mm -mm. You are born in this time for a purpose. God has something for you to do that nobody else can do it like you for the people that you interact with. Therefore, turn to Him, yield to Him. You will find purpose in your life. You will find what you were designed to do. That emptiness that is in you will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. It will be full. You know, it's like being hungry. Hmm. You know, we're, I think, I think a large, and I'm not trying to criticize, I'm just stating a fact, a large portion of the churches today don't feed the hungry. They, they provide snacks. Mm -hmm. Just enough to get over that little twinge of hunger, and then we're satisfied with that. That's not being filled. No, it's that's not, at not all. what hunger is about. I mean, it's God not what wants God for wants for us. That's right. He doesn't want us to just have a little bit. That's Satan that's saying, "Oh, a little bit's enough. A little bit's that's enough. Right. A little bit's enough." And that's not enough. That's not enough to do anything with. I mean, yes. you wouldn't stop it at second grade in school and say, "Well, that's enough." No. You want to keep going. That's right. Matter of fact, Luke six twenty one says, "Blessed are they that hungry. Mm. Now, for they shall be filled." That's right. And, and so, you know, uh, Matthew 5, 6, hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. It's that hunger, they'll be filled, but the hunger for more righteousness, more understanding, more revelation in the word. Just, you're filled and then you're hungry. And then you're filled and then you're hungry. Just like we in the natural part. Mm -hmm. we're, we fill, you know, if we're hungry, if we eat. If you're not, you know, you don't. That's right. So, but it's normal to be hungry. And But it's more than just a fleshly hunger. It's a spiritual hunger. That's what he's after. We've talked about that even in our own church where we've talked about 
how many are there on Sunday morning and how many are there on Wednesday night or a Sunday night. Yes. And, and, and kind of wondered why aren't all the people as hungry as this one group that's in there. Right. And it's, it's something that you have to want. I mean, yes. you, have to have a, you have to create a desire. If you don't have a desire to, to read the, the Word of God, if you don't have a, have a desire to attend a church regularly, ask God for that desire. Yes. He will give you the desire. Yeah. But if, if you're willing to just go along with everything and just, oh, okay, well, I'm still hungry, but, you know, it, it's, it's like driving down here. We had a three-hour drive, and if I was hungry and hadn't said anything to you, you weren't going to stop. That's right. But if you're hungry, stop and eat. Right. And that's what you have to do here with the Word. You have to want to be, want, want to fill that hunger and then go fill it. Stop and eat. We have to stop and eat. And you know, the Lord, the Lord will provide enough through the day if you don't have access to the mm -hmm. Word. Even if, That's why it's so important and so crucial to tune your ear to the finest whispers that yes. He says. Correct. The Father says. Because, I mean, that's what Jesus did. He, he got alone. He, he went off by himself mm -hmm. to fellowship with the Father. Mm -hmm. We need to fellowship with the Father every day. Yes. And, and he'll lay out our design. Matter of fact, that should be one of the first things you do in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, it, it, the morning is, is the best time to get, my wife and I call it our quiet time. Right. We have our time with the Lord. I, I have my time. I can read my Bible. I can study, prepare a sermon, wh whatever it is. But I have that time every day at the beginning of the day to yeah. start my day. And then when it started off right, and, and, and I can pray for God to lead me, and you know, I've got this coming up today and this coming up today. Show me, Lord, what to do. Help yes. me with this. My kids are going through this. Help them. Then the day folds out, and it, it's great. If you wait, then everything has already happened, and it, it's hard to pray for something that's already happened. Right. I'd much rather be prepared right. and pray early. Well, I think the Lord, the Lord wants to lay out what He wants you to do for the day. Sure. Because... And, and that's so crucial because then we're giving him first place. Mm -hmm. There's no other thing and that takes that place. And for that, another name for that thing is idol. Yes. There's no other idol that you give preference to first. It should be the Father. Absolutely. And it's, you know, I've been guilty in the past. You know, you guy gets busy, the busy time of the season, so on and so forth. You know, Lord, I don't have time right now. I'll get with you later. Mm -hmm. Well, later, later never comes. That's right. You know, later never comes, like, just like tomorrow. Tomorrow never gets here. Mm -hmm. We're in the day now. Yes. We're not in the past. We're not studying historical God. We're not studying the future God. Although there are things that's going to happen that's already been prophesied. But we're today. I mean, doesn't the word say today is sufficient for itself? Yes, absolutely. So, so don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the past. The past is already done. But what's the Holy Spirit want you to do today? It's so important, so critical. And, you know, Dave, this doesn't... This doesn't mean that we can't have fun in life. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of people go through this and they struggle with this because they, they, they see this Christian family and all they do is sit around and pray. They don't, they don't go out and party. They didn't do this. They didn't do this. They didn't come to our, our gathering. But I have had more fun since I've been saved yeah. than I ever did in my crazy days when I was young and partying and doing things that I shouldn't be doing because... All that time I lived with a guilt knowing, knowing that I was doing something wrong. Right. Knowing that I was doing something out of God's will for me. Yeah. So, and, and you people out there, you know that God has a will for you. Absolutely. Stop fighting it. You, you will find more comfort and more ease and more fulfillment in your life, more joy in your life when you start to do what God wants you to do. Yes. And yeah. we're, we, we, we tend to... to want to do the fun things because we see everybody else doing it, but this is a lot more fun. This is a lot in more reality, fun. In reality, it so is. Much, so much more fulfilling in our lives. Yes. There's a satisfaction 
that you have no other mm -hmm. place. Right. I mean, truly. You know, the other thing I found as, as, as a believer, as someone that's, that's saved and born again, is my friends today are real. Yeah. I, I, I can go to a friend and say, I, I can go to you. He's one of my best friends and say, Dave, I got a problem. Can you help me with this? And you don't get mad at me. You don't get disappointed. You help me with the problem, whatever right. it is. Right. Now, when you went to a friend before, yeah. they said what they thought you wanted to hear. Right. And that never does help because you just continue to do what you're doing wrong and what you have a problem with. And it might make you feel better for 10 minutes, but then you're right back to where you were. Well, see, they're trying to, most of the time when that happens, that person's trying to justify why they did this. Exactly. And all your, all your worldly friends are doing is adding their negative words mm -hmm. to your negative situation. Yes. There you go back to the negative stuff. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The, get out of the negative. Just, yeah. just walk away from it. You don't need it. That's right. And, um, it just works. It does it work. Just does, it it does. just works. It's, it's, you know, without a, you know, you can go to a church and hear the most powerful preaching and a great revelation. Mm -hmm. Something that you th open your eyes and say, wow. That's what that means. Yeah. And yet, if you don't respond to that, it's it's like it's in the one ear and out the other. It just it, it doesn't yeah, go Yeah, seed that place. falls on the rock. It, yeah. it, it, it may spring up first season, but come because yeah. because it's not grounded. It's not rooted in you. That's right. That's why it's so critical to get in the Word of God mm -hmm. and, and and to to listen to to good things. Yep. TV as a whole. Secular TV <laughs> as a whole is just pretty sad. Disgusting for the yeah, most part. For the I, most part. I, 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 we rarely watch it. We watch Christian television almost all the time. Uh, and, and folks, I, I'll tell you, if there's something that you enjoy watching, right. screen it. I, I right. watch a ball game from time to time. Sure. Uh, there's not, I don't have a problem with no, that. No, absolutely not. But when you start getting into the, the soap operas and the dramas and the reality stuff, and, and you, you know, you might, you might be going a little bit too far. So stop and, and, and really think about what you're watching and what you're hearing and what's getting into your system because nothing will come out of you that's not already in you. That's right. Well, so. as a matter of fact, my wife and I were counseling a, a couple that, uh, that was having some marital problems. Mm -hmm. And one of her vices was reality TV. I mm -hmm. said, and, and, and as a result of reality TV, you know, she was watching the Jerry Springers and the mm -hmm. Poviches and so on and so forth. The, the, what, what resulted from her watching all this all the time for hours on end was that then it aroused suspicions that her husband <laughs> was was cheating yeah, on her. That's probably true. A and he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But but see, it allowed that suspicious nature that that negativity that ne that, that demonic yeah. being was telling her that that her husband mm -hmm. was because he never uh, told her that he loved her. Mm. Let me tell you, you got to tell your wife that you love her. <laughs> you better. You better. <laughs> and and you, listen, I tell my wife all the time she's beautiful. And she is. Because if you don't tell her that she's beautiful, you know, what are you going to if, if you don't <laughs> say that she's beautiful, don't get in she trouble here. <laughs> she ain't going to be beautiful. Not to in you. In the future. She's still beautiful, but just not to you. That's where you lose it. No, I th I think it I think it even manifests further than I that. I see what you're saying. Okay. Because when you continually reinforce, and I mean it, mm -hmm. right? When I say, you know, honey, you're just absolutely gorgeous, mm -hmm. and she'll go, oh, I said, no, you are, and and because I've said that, almost not every day, but almost every day, mm -hmm. then that's manifested in her. See, sure. Because why? Because I was speaking it. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, and I was Speak proclaiming what I wanted. I, That's right. I don't want to say, oh, man, you're ugly. <laughs> you know? I mean, that just doesn't make sense. That's not something you tell your wife. No, it's not something <laughs> you tell your wife. And, 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 but my point is, you have what you say, just like That's we've right. been talking about exactly. the last few shows. 
Yeah. You have what you say. And I got a gorgeous wife, you know. And, and it's 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 just real. Mm -hmm. It's just real. So I, I mean, that's all I can say. It's just you real. know, we, we were talking about if you don't have a desire to to do some of this stuff, ask God for that desire. And it's the same thing with our words. And it, when I first started, when I first grabbed the concept of the power of the word, I really had to go to the Lord and say. Teach me how to do this. Show me how yeah. to do this. And I, I had to ask, watch me. And, I, and, and my, my wife and I both, if one of us says something that's out of the will of God, right. we'll say, is that what you really meant? Was that really your declaration? Oh, no, it wasn't. So as, 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 as you people, and the, the young lady that you were speaking to and the others out there in that same exact situation, Start asking God for the things that you want yes. and then start expecting to get them. Because if, if you go out there just kind of with a, well, I, I hope it happens or maybe it's not going to happen. You've got to expect it to happen. Expect those prayers to be answered immediately and then they will be. Well, it's just like we were saying before. See, when you say it and continue to say it, mm -hmm. It continues to be a picture in your mind. It does. And when you see it in the totality that God wants you to see it in, then it's yours. Boom. Immediately. Then it's yours. Speak it into life. That's right. Let, let's, here's one of my favorite stories. Well, go ahead. How many, how many stories are in this book? <laughs> They're all my favorites <laughs> at one time or another. <laughs> they, they, it, because each one sends me right to a place in my life. It's like, oh. Then I read another one. Oh, but but the the, the woman with the issue of blood. Okay, um, it, it's such a neat story, and that is in. I think it's in Mark five. Here we go, Mark 5 and 25. Talked about a certain woman that had a flow of blood for 12 years. She'd suffered many things from many physicians and spent all her money. And to paraphrase this, here was a woman that, 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 that bled constantly. She went to all these physicians and paid them all the money she had. She spent every penny she had right. and was getting worse and not better. Right. But then as we go to verse 27, and this, is, this, this just hits me every time I read it. But when she heard about Jesus, now, she hadn't heard about Jesus before, but when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Now, verse 28 is, is this is it. For she said, yeah. she didn't hope, right. she didn't pray, she didn't believe. It says, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of, her, fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. The point here is she had all kinds of faith that Jesus would heal her. And we've always looked at this, too, as a, as a faith story, and it is. She had the faith to believe something was going to happen, but first she had to speak it into existence, just like God spoke light into existence. She had to speak her healing into existence. Yeah. yeah. So, so folks out, out there, start speaking to that, that, that mountain of whatever it is in your life. It might be a mountain of, of disease. It might be a mountain of, of, of a financial mountain. You, you might have some expenses and some bills that aren't paid. Start speaking to those. Start, start saying, I have no, my debts. All my bills are paid. My house payment is up. Is up uh, it, it's current. My, my cars are all paid for. My, my healing is good. Pray for relationships. I, I get, you might be struggling with a relationship. Speak to that relationship. My relationship is good. Uh, there is no problems in this relationship. Start speaking to that mountain. And that's going to that's gonna make some things happen in your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, in Matthew, there's uh, a long time ago, the Lord showed me these different scriptures coming in here, and they were all talking about, had to do with saying, mm -hmm. with words. For yeah. example, Matthew chapter 8, and behold, in verse 2, behold, this is in the King James, behold, there came a leopard and worshipped him saying, mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said, say, by saying. There came a leper and worshipped him by saying, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Lord, if thou wilt, thou wilt make me clean. Mm -hmm. And what was Jesus' response? I will be thou clean. <laughs> okay. Now how difficult is that? <laughs> how difficult is that? All right. Go over to, to Matthew chapter 9, verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. How? Saying. By saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And, in verse 19, And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Why did the disciples follow Jesus? That's a good question. <laughs> Jesus did this so the disciples would follow and set the example for us. Right. If the disciples are following Jesus, we're the disciples today, right. we are to follow Jesus. Right. And everything he does and everything he did, we are to follow him. Yeah. So, yeah. Just sitting and, and you know, follow can mean so many different things, but I, I, I grew up in the time of the, the nighttime soap operas, Dallas and Knott's Landing and, and, and all those, and everybody would talk about Oh, did you see what's going to happen tonight? Or when uh, was it on Dallas that Jr. got shot and everybody couldn't wait to the next season? You followed these soap operas and you knew all about them. You knew all the cast members. And you know who shot this and who was over here doing this. And it's kind of like following a, a baseball team, your favorite team. You follow that team. You know everybody on the team. You know who the pitchers are and the catchers in the outfield. You know all about those teams. That's what following Jesus is all about. It's about knowing Jesus. It's yeah. about knowing everything about him. And yeah. You know, when we plug ourselves in to follow Jesus, like we follow other things in our life that yeah. really have no importance at all. But that's but, right. But that's when we start. That's why Jesus took the disciples, because they followed him. They knew about it. They wanted to be there. They wanted to see that next miracle. They wanted to see that next healing. They wanted to be there when he raised somebody from the dead. And we need to be there, too. And those things are still happening today, Dave. That's right. And don't be discouraged, because how many times did Jesus ask, Oh, where, where is your faith? Yeah, where is your faith? You know, where is your faith? I mean, yeah. and they were right there with him, saw him constantly. Keep plugging away. Keep yeah, plugging keep away. Keep plugging away. Don't give up. Mm -mm. It, just don't give up. It's real. It's genuine. It is. And it's more real than your fleshly body. And it's more fun than you can ever imagine anything else Absolutely. in your life to be. Absolutely. You know, like I said, your friends are so real and so true, and, and, yeah. and the people that you really get to know, it's just, it's an amazing journey. It is. So jump on. Amen. Well, we're about out of time. I want to thank you, Scott, for being with us. Thank these, you. These four sessions, and, and we want you to be blessed. Be blessed, people, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the Has anyone ever told you that God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life? I have a real quick but very important question to ask you. If you were to die this very second, do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you'd go straight to heaven? If that answer is, I'm not sure, pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus here in my heart. Folks, if you prayed that prayer and meant it with your heart, call us at WTJR 228-1616 and you're on your way to heaven.